The first thing about PSSR that is negative, I would say, is that if you look at any given area of the image, you can always see there's kind of a moving fizzle there. Look at this tree up close or those leaves behind them flush against the building or the lines on the building itself and what you kind of see there is a crawling fizzle in the PSSR view. I'm not exactly sure what it is, maybe some sort of meta instability in the image, but it is found across every single comparison I've made so far of PSSR and the other scalers. It's a fizzling that is not found there when compared to DLSS, nor is it found when you compare against FSR for that matter. So PSSR can be better than FSR in its problematic areas, but this problem area is specific to PSSR here, and it often will show less overall image stability than the other scalers, especially next to DLSS, which will tend to resolve very stable lines, especially when the camera is still. That cannot be said of PSSR. When put next to DLSS, another thing that I notice is how moving geometry has a higher level of temporal stability with DLSS. These buildings here that bob up and down, with PSSR on the left, you can see how the edges shimmer, showing active aliasing. Whereas with DLSS on the right, those same buildings have reduced flicker in comparison. I would not say DLSS completely eliminates it, but there is a noticeable difference here in stability in favor of DLSS. This also bears out when you look at more rapidly moving objects, where PSSR will do a better job than FSR as I showed off earlier, but versus DLSS, it does not anti-alias as well. For example, moving geometry like Ratchet's Wrench. With motion blur getting in the way, it is honestly a bit hard to see, but if you find those frames where motion blur is not on them, you can see that PSSR tends to resolve more aliased objects in movement than DLSS. You would see this better if there was no motion blur here, of course. This applies as well to those things that are recently disoccluded, like the wire on the ground here. Aliasing sticks around longer over time there in the PSSR view than it does in the DLSS view. So generally, PSSR in the same case-by-case -case comparisons is less stable than DLSS whether you're looking at things that are moving or if the camera is just sitting still. Another macro difference you can see between DLSS and PSSR is in image softness. Let's start with surface texture detail here. DLSS no longer has an inherent post-process sharpener as I'm showing in the middle here. Instead, it's added on a per game basis, like I've turned up all the way on the right. And even with post-process sharpening off as we see in the middle, I think we can see how the resolve of PSSR is still noticeably softer. For the detail like the wood grain on the boxes, I think you could see that as a detriment. But I still would say I vastly prefer the image on the far left here to the image on the far right, which has game sharpening maxed out and looks really strange. Another thing to notice as a part of this softness is you can see differences in edge gradients, such as on the rounded tower here. Yes, the inner surface detail versus DLSS is lower, but if you look at some of the rounded edges, you can see that there's a better edge gradient there on PSSR, even though it is less stable. The resolve of a reconstruction technique is a partially subjective question, as different widths of resolve, so to speak, can have pluses or minuses for anti-aliasing. But in general, it's easy to see across multiple comparisons how PSSR is softer than DLSS and will often be less stable even if some of the edges have a better gradient. One less subjective thing to be talked about is ray tracing and the strange smears or ghosting that PSSR resolves. Now, Oliver talked about this in his video, but I just wanted to talk about it a little bit more here as well, compared against the other techniques. Compared against DLSS, for example, on Clank, as he moves on Ratchet's back, I want you to mainly look at the reflections on Clank's face and body there. You can see how the reflections in the PSSR view lag behind Clank's movement and leave these kind of trails that have this flowing look about them. It is admittedly a little strange and unexpected to see, and I'm having a hard time saying it's PSSR's fault here, actually, because there's a lot of things that can contribute to ray tracing denoising. And there's some behaviors that I don't really expect to see. For example, if you speed up the video playback while looking at this golden metal here, you can see how the reflections kind of move in a strange way with PSSR that just doesn't happen with DLSS. 
The way ray tracing meshes with image reconstruction can be complex, and the noise pattern that is input that is given to the reconstruction can have a huge impact on the output image quality. And we know for certain that Insomniac has tweaked the sampling pattern to mesh better with PSSR. And maybe a byproduct of that change is this trails issue we are seeing here. It's really hard to know though, of course, without looking under the hood. Still, I would say even if the reflections in movement, as I've shown, have some negative aspects, it has led to a better reflection stability. This is especially true when compared against DLSS, where the checkerboard input in this title on the high setting as matching PS5 doesn't actually work with DLSS and it spits out the same checkerboard pattern as an output, which leaves reflections on perfectly mirror surfaces like this one looking chunky and aliased. That doesn't look right. PSSR here with its changed sample input is resolving checkerboarding merged correctly so then it looks high res. And compared to the other scalers too, we can see that work paying off where with the other image reconstruction techniques, the resolution of the ray tracing looks high enough, but it's not necessarily as temporally stable as PSSR. So maybe that ghosting we're seeing earlier has some positive aspects where things are more stable over time when the camera is still.